Hey everyone, this week I'm gonna take a little bit of a break of my quest to paint every square inch of my car. I'm gonna head into the next major system, which is the brakes. I'm really excited to show you guys what's in store for the brakes. Here's why. Garage time. Now, of course, my brakes aren't gonna be stock. If you've been following my build, you know the theme has three main topics. It has adjustability, it has custom parts, and it has performance parts. And that's where these brakes are no different. Okay, this pedal box is the stock pedal box. It's designed for a single master cylinder. I mean, that master cylinder does have two circuits, front and rear, in case one circuit was to fail. But it doesn't have adjustability in terms of the front to rear brake bias. Once the piston sizes are fixed, that's all you get. You cannot really change it. So I'm gonna be modifying this pedal box today to accept dual master cylinders. Dual master cylinders allows me to do two things. One, it allows me to change the size of the master cylinders. These master cylinders are actually different sizes. So depending on the bore, I can affect the front to rear brake bias. And in addition to that, I can attach the, the master cylinders to the pedal box using this adjustable balance bar. That will allow me to mechanically change the force that the brake pedal exerts on each master cylinder so I can have even more control over the front to rear brake bias. The other key feature of my build has been budget build. And so this is a little bit contradictory to what I've been doing, but let me explain. Okay, the original plan, which was within budget, was to use these Brembo calipers from a 1998 Boxster. These are the rears. I've actually already sold the fronts. This is a good upgrade for Porsche, early Porsche, but there are some adapters and things you have to make to get it to attach to the rear uh, trailing arms. So that was my original plan. And then I found these. These calipers are custom CNC machined calipers from the UK. My friend Chris hooked me up with these and I could not refuse. Okay, you guys know I've been keeping track of all the costs that go into my Porsche spreadsheet budget. So this is a little bit of a sticking point. I am going to keep the pricing of the Boxster brakes in my budget, but obviously this I couldn't refuse. So your results may vary, but look at these things. Okay, these are six piston calipers. CNC machined aluminum, and they are just works of art. They're absolutely beautiful. They already have the adapter built in, so I don't have to make anything to get them to fit to my, my struts. They will fit within the 15 inch Fook wheel envelope. So I intend to run sort of those period look wheels. And these brakes are obviously super important and key to be able to run in the 15 inch wheel. So with the Boxster brakes, that may not have been possible. I'm really happy with these. Thanks again, Chris. Really excited to use these. So I just wanted to show you the calipers. I'm not gonna be mounting these today, but this obviously goes along with how I designed the brake system in the master cylinders. Okay, even before these calipers came along, I was always gonna do the dual master cylinder setup. That's because the Porsche Boxster brakes, I have both the front and the rear, they are really not an ideal ratio of pressure. So, you know, it's a modern car and oftentimes modern cars are designed for the public safety in mind. So it's safer to have high bias towards the front brakes. So if you're panicked and you're driving down the freeway and you happen to turn and hit the brakes like most common people would, then you're not gonna spin the car. So, but for my car, performance car with a lot of weight in the rear, it really needs more bias towards the rear. So that's why the dual master cylinder setup was, was really the key to making the Boxster brakes work. And it's also key to making these brakes work even better. It gives me that adjustability that I always wanted. So let's work on the pedal box. Okay, this pedal box is in really good condition. I've already gone through it and restored all the pieces. I didn't make a video about it because I had a few of these that I restored and sold. And so this one is sort of the best of all the pieces from the various boxes. And I knew I was gonna be taking it apart again to do the dual master cylinder. You can see like right here, this roll pin's not even pushed in. Now the stock master cylinder actually pokes through the firewall or the footwell of the car. In this, these are compact master cylinders, so they can be 
mounted such that it fits with inside the interior of the car. So I'll be putting them here in an angle that's appropriate so that it all fits without having to poke holes in the car. So let's take it apart. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use this factory brake switch, but we'll worry about that later. This one is in very good condition. Normally this is all rusted out here and it's super pitted. This one only has a little bit of pitting in it, but it's, uh, it's really nice. Okay, this is the brake pedal. And before I cut this pin out for the factory master cylinder, I'm going to record its distance from its axis that it pivots upon. You know, this ratio between this distance and the distance between here and the pedal is important because that'll change the brake feel or the, the mechanical advantage. So I just want to write that down and try to duplicate it as close as possible when I put in my new pivot. It should be 42.6. Yep, that looks right. So I'm just going to try to get it really close to that. 42, 43 will be fine. The balance bar mechanism has this spherical bearing in the middle. And this outer diameter just happens to be one inch, which is the same size as this tubing that I used for the uh, roll cage. So the idea is to cut the length of this tubing so that if this were to actually pivot too far, in other words, if one of the master cylinders was to lose pressure and that circuit was out, then you don't want to lose the back brakes too, or the front brakes, whatever vice versa is. So you don't want this bar to, to manipulate itself more than a few degrees. So that's why the bar has to be a little bit longer than just the bearing. I've just added back a little material right here because I thought it was a little thin uh, where that existing hole was. And so I welded in a new piece. You can see it's fully filled in from both sides with some TIG weld there. And also I forgot to mention that I'm probably gonna be strengthening this area after this tube gets welded in place. Probably put some gussets across this plate too, just because this is the brakes and I don't want this to fail. Oh, and speaking of TIG welding, I wanted to take a moment to plug my new online TIG course. It is a paid course, but it is very comprehensive. It walks you through the complete welder setup, all the materials needed, the settings, goes into how to tackle repairs in your car strategically, 
It goes into weld progression from easy to more difficult. We go through removing heat distortion and how to finish panels so they're nice and smooth. This is one of the panels that was actually used in the lesson. This has already been welded. You can see how smooth it is. And then on the back side, there's the weld. So if you're having trouble with welding or TIG welding in particular, you know, burning holes and distorting panels and not getting things to fit really well, I solve those problems for you. You'll save hours and hours of frustration. TIG welding has a steep learning curve. And if you don't invest in yourself, then it's gonna just make it more frustrating. So please check it out. I really think it's worthwhile. I put a lot of effort into it. All right, this proves my point. There's no such thing as a rust-free car. If you look inside there, there's rust underneath this bracket. This bracket's rusty. Even though this part was almost pristine, there's still rust underneath the, every little flange like that. So don't let anyone tell you yeah, they have, they have a rust-free car. It doesn't exist. Already changing my mind on the placement of this tube here, because it's just too cramped here against the clutch pedal. There's really just not enough room and I don't wanna space the clutch pedal out any more than it already is. So I'm gonna move this tube over to the right. There's lots of room over here now that I got rid of that brake switch bracket. So everything shifted to the right should help keep it lined up. Okay, this is much better. It's lined up more to the right and there's room for the clutch pedal. But now this clevis part is interfering with the actual brake pedal. So now my idea is to shift this whole assembly over to the right inside this tube. So I'm thinking about cutting the tube and then welding it back on over here to change the dimension. That's gonna push the brake pedal a little closer to the gas pedal. So I may have to cut the pedal off here and make an adjustable pedal mount. That gives me a sort of straight line. This is too big to fit in my bandsaw, so I'm gonna have to just saw it with a hacksaw. Yeah, that looks better, but I'm gonna move this tube back where it was. Oops. Okay, here's where we're at. I have this temporary plate just holding the master cylinders in place, just trying to get a gauge for what the position might be. 
and things are still, you know, sort of flopping around. But it looks like the cylinders are in good alignment with the mounting locations and the brake pedal. The only concern now is that it looks like when this brake pedal goes forward, it looks like it could contact the boot or maybe even the master cylinder if it went all the way down. So what I might need to do is reduce this width of this flange back here because that's pushing these pretty close. But before I take it apart again, I'm gonna set it in the car and just see how much room there is for the plumbing and also just these in the footwell area. Okay, the good news, this fits in the car pretty well. There's good clearance with the footwell, with the master cylinders, and the positioning of everything looks right. It fits right into the factory holes. But I've come to the conclusion that either I have to remake the pedal without this S shape into it, because the, the pedal actually hits the master cylinder, or I have to put the master cylinders down lower and poke holes in the car where they exit out the footwells. So <clears throat> I've come to the conclusion to just make a new pedal. I gotta make a whole new pedal. Unfortunately, I don't have the material, the right thickness of this material. So I'm gonna mock up a pedal out of some thinner material that I do have. And I have ordered the thicker material. It'll probably be here tomorrow. And just like I did here, this is not the actual material. I'm just using thin gauge material because it's easier to work with. Cardboard templates in this case are just too weak. Okay, I think I'm gonna try this shape and get rid of that S. Okay, here are the pedals side by side. This is the original one with this giant sort of bend in it. And this one essentially just goes straight up. Although I did offset this forward um, for a reason. I'll show you that when I put it inside the pedal box. Haven't figured out the top of the pedal yet. Just trying to make sure it clears the master cylinders and works well in the car. I just checked the position of the cylinders relative to the car. And it looks like I can shorten up this flange a little bit, or maybe take it away. I have about an inch of clearance between the footwell and the back of the master cylinder. So I'm gonna lower these down a little bit and push them back. And that should help out a little bit when this tries to contact up here. So full stroke, I don't want this to contact this. I'm getting closer now. I have, I've got this pedal with its tube into the housing now with the actual bushings installed so it's not so floppy. It's nice and firm like the original pedal was. And I've also remade this plate in the back with the lower positions of the master cylinders and also reduce this flange. Now this one is the actual correct gauge. So my hope is that this is gonna fit well and I'm gonna use this in the car, not a temporary piece. This pedal is still temporary, but I'm uh, getting much closer. And just so you know, I'm not doing this completely trial by air. I mean, there's been lots of errors so far, but there is some method and there is a lot of thought going into the geometry. Okay, the main function of this whole pedal assembly is to take this circular motion, you know, hinges around this pivot. The clutch also hinges around this pivot. And so the pedal moves back and forth in this circular path. And then this attachment point basically converts this circular motion into some linear motion into this master cylinder. So this position is important relative to the position of the master cylinder because at its maximum 
force, which is probably, this is free position, maximum force is probably right about here, hard braking conditions. What we want is a right angle between this master cylinder and this pivot. So that's what I've tried to do is make a right angle here during maximum force. So in the free position, it's forward of the perpendicular point. And then in max stroke, it's actually a little bit beyond the perpendicular position. But right here is the sweet spot, right where normal braking occurs is right here perpendicular to the pivot. That gives the maximum amount of um, rotation motion into linear motion. That's really all there is to it. I just wanted to show that I'm not just randomly putting these things in position. There's a reason why this circle is leaning forward versus this pivot. Well, here's the complete pedal box assembled with all the pedals sort of roughly in place. I did have to make a few modifications. One modification was done here to the clutch pedal area. Remember, this clutch pedal had a stop for its forward motion with this rubber bumper on a thin sheet metal bracket. This bracket interfered with this turnbuckle system, so I had to remove it. And since then, I've ground off a little bit of the factory arm so that it'll clear this brake portion. And I added this piece on here. This was welded on to the factory piece. It's just a flat piece. I'm probably going to be putting in a threaded spacer or something so I can control this stop distance. Right now it's coming a little bit too far forward. The other thing I've done is I've temporarily positioned this brake pedal roughly in its spot. So if I control these by hand, these are about the right positions. And I'm thinking about making this uh, pedal portion detachable so that I can adjust its position mostly from left to right. And then the gas pedal has been added. Uh, I need to put it in the car so I know what angle it goes into. But this linkage system appears to be interfering with this temporary bracket I have right here. So I want to put that in the car before I figure out what sort of supports I need to add to this piece back here. Here's what it looks like when I actuate the brakes. I do get full motion all the way to the full stroke of the master cylinders. So the pedal design is looking much better. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the car one more time and check the pedal positions. Let's do it. Everything fit in the car pretty well. I'm happy the, with the clearance back here with the master cylinder. It's close to the body, but not too close. I'm able to get it in without too much wrestling. Uh, the pedal, the brake pedal is pretty close to the gas pedal. I'm not sure right now if that's good or bad. Um, my plan is to, you know, put spacers between here and change the angle of this portion. So my thought was to just bolt it together uh, with some fail-proof bolts that would move this over to the left if needed. I think right now it's in the closest possible position to the gas pedal. But if I need to move it over, I want to be able to add spacers to shift it. I'm temporarily putting this brake switch back in just because it has this tab right here. And that tab prevents this from, from backing too far down. Uh, that's so the pedal doesn't just, you know, flop forward. And I'm going to be putting a brace across this diagonal here. And I just wanted to try to preserve that tab feature.
This looks like it might be the final mock-up. Pretty happy with how everything is fit together. So let me show you some of the things I've been working on. Uh, number, number one is right here. This is a adjustable clutch stop. This might be a little too small, but it only prevents the pedal from coming forward too far. So hopefully this will last. It is adjustable. I probably need to uh, maybe scoot it back a little bit and add a lock nut on there or put the lock nut on this side. The other thing I did is I clearanced the throttle linkage so it fits besides right besides the master cylinder. It's almost touching. I am going to have to space it out a little bit. Right now you can see that that bushing is not exactly all the way seated and that's about probably a sixteenth of an inch. Back here you can't see it but I welded the nuts on the inside of the plate because it's really difficult to get a wrench in there. So you'll have to screw it in from the backside. There's a bolt there on the backside. That goes in this direction. This direction has to have a nut on this side because this is a tight distance. You won't be able to get the bolt in there. So this comes off with a nut. I am intending to put this piece in. So because the pedal has this big offset in it, it's gonna have some twisting action. So I am adding a couple strengthening pieces to the pedal. Now keep in mind, this is not the right metal. I'm gonna be using the stock thickness pedal, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And it's gonna have this feature at the bottom here, which ties this balance bar tube down to the pivot tube. That'll go there. And then I may box that in across the, the width there. So that creates a box section. And then on the back of the pedal, it's gonna have this web right here, which really strengthens these jogs in the sheet metal. So remember, it's gonna be much, much thicker, the same thickness as the stock piece. All the strengthening ribs here for the pedal box are there to prevent the master cylinders from deflecting backwards. So there's these triangular gussets in three places. They tie into the original box structure. And then along the back, it has these flanges top and bottom. So this flange here on the bottom strengthens it. I'm thinking about adding another web right underneath these master cylinders, right underneath these bolts. I also added a small little shelf in here to include the brake switch. This is adjustable in terms of when the switch turns on or off. Now the spherical bearing is not secured in the middle of this tube yet. I'm gonna wait till I get the new clutch pedal and the new clutch sheet metal so I can weld all that together. There is a lock nut here, which keeps that bearing in the middle. So I will be welding this in. That's also why this is a little bit offset. I wanna put this on the back side and not the front side because all the forces are gonna be pushing towards this portion of the tube. I also added this tab here to this side of the gusset. So when the brake pedal comes forward, it has something to stop against. So I really tried to re retain as much of the stock design as possible and the stock components as possible. The only difference here now is there's an extra master cylinder. So now all three pedal positions are adjustable. There's a big adjustment right here. There's a bolt that goes in the back of this if you wanna create a stop when it hits the floor. There's the adjustment down here now. There's the adjustment of the brake pedal. I can change the pedal position by lengthening or shortening these push rods. I'm also able to change the gas pedal position by adjusting this linkage right here. I also welded up the hole here for the master cylinder. That's the original position of the master cylinder. That's gonna prevent water and dirt from getting in the car. Here's how it looks when you push the brake pedal. It goes all the way down right about there. Now, depending on the length of the push rods, this may bottom out on the bar or it may actually bottom out in the cylinders of the master cylinder. But we'll have, brake, we'll have strong brake pedal well before it gets this far. I'm still waiting for that heavy gauge 5 16 material to arrive. Dual master cylinders are a lot of work. You know, I tried to maintain that stock pedal, ended up cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, and ended up now just throwing it in the trash. So. Took more work, uh, but for a guy like me who likes to tinker and play with things on the track, I think it's gonna be well worthwhile. I'm really excited about the brakes. Um, the, the calipers are awesome. This is really gonna be a high performance system and I can't wait to troubleshoot it and play with it on the road. Take care guys.